Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So, welcome to another daily video. Today what I wanted to do is actually show off a few things that I completed throughout throughout the weekend. Um, during this weekend, I had a stream where I basically did a lot of dragon dungeons. I did a lot of runs. I had like... Uh, I did over, um, you know, I had over 100 sigils, but I in, in my stream I only had 90 left because I did a few the night before. So I basically did over 50 runs of Dragon's B10. And I gotten some pretty good siphoning gems um, that I was able to gem up my Light Snowy with a full siphoning set. And this is basically his gems. Um, this is attack, attack, and um, HP. So this is pretty good. This is this was actually the one I got during the weekend, and this was able with this I was able to complete a full siphoning set on the snowy. Basically, with two attack gems, he has enough damage to one shot anything on Star Sanctuary, which actually made my runs a lot faster. And the other thing I managed to get is I I managed to get two percent defense gems. Um, these aren't super good. Like the substats are absolute absolutely horrible, but they are siphoning. So I decided to make use of them and then this is actually a flat gem but it was a flat defense gem and it had a defense substat so I decided to try to power this up and luckily it went into defense twice so this is actually pretty nice as well I was able to get my light Victoria on a decent um, siphoning set I think this is around 9,000 defense so it's not like super high but it, it is pretty good um, if I was able to switch this in in for another defense percent then you know she would have like the perfect gem set and basically strong enough to do a lot of things. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be using them for different things. Um, first of all, I wanted to show off my Star Sanctuary run. This is actually the team I've been. Well, this is actually not actually the team I used to farm it, but I've been using this team to farm because um, I'm lo also leveling my Light Lilith who's also very, very close to max level. So I'm just going to do a run of, um, you know, using three actual main units. My, my li light, light uh, succubus is actually very, very close to, to max as well. All right, that was a little bit unlucky with the blue soul, so she didn't get a full bar. Okay, now, she, now they both have a full bar. All right. So once they have a full bar, what they're gonna do is they're gonna they're gonna nuke. They're just gonna nonstop nuke. <coughs> and like this, this is just one star sanctuary run. Um, the dark Victoria is basically just here to to provide the attack lead because my light one's not a variant. I could make her a variant, but I'm gonna actually just wait until I summon a or fuse another variant um, and then I'll raise a second light Victoria and probably by that time I might be able to put the se second light Victoria also on siphon so that's what I was thinking about so we're gonna actually I forgot how many seconds that was I think it was like 50 seconds we're gonna see if I can get a luckier run where I basically get my bar full um, right right away Alright, it did take two turns to get my bar full. So I think on on average most of these runs will take like two turns to, to get the Snowy's bar full. Because it, it, it isn't a morale boost monster. If it was a morale boost monster, then I will be able to get my full bar on first turn. But the good thing is at least on second turn they will have a full bar. And then they will just keep AoE nuking the whole entire wave. until the end of time. So that was 46 seconds. It was pretty it's pretty nice. Not too bad. And the other thing I actually was able to do use my snowy for is I was able to kind of put together a golden speed 10 team. So you know this team didn't exactly work but um, this one did. This one actually worked pretty well. It's not it's not super good but it's decent. It's not really stable because uh, like I only have two light units. I think it would be a lot more stable if I switch out my Thor and put in the light wild thing. But I, I don't have my light wild thing gem, gem drop prop, gemmed up properly. 
So I'm just currently using my Thor, kind of as a filler. All right, that was a little bit unfortunate. They normally have their bars full by second turn. It was unfortunate that um, I think like maybe one of them didn't crit or something, and the the Moonflower somehow survived. But after a second wave, it's actually pretty smooth because they'll my Snowy will have her full, bar full, so will my Vic. And the two of them will just keep AoE nuking non-stop. I think to make this stable, I definitely do need one more unit on Siphon. I think if I can raise another Light Victoria on Siphon, put her there, and then I can use someone else as a leader. Maybe not the Thor, someone that, actually, that I actually have a leader skill with. All right, this is definitely pretty pretty nice. And then now I rely on the armor break to uh to kill the boss. If I can land an armor break, I will be able to kill him in like two or three turns. And then Snowy Siphon, although it's on, I'm only hitting one target, is still healing quite a lot because my other units are like Thor's Gen with one slot defense. Um, the the uh, Dark Sea Star is also gemmed with like two slot defense, and Light Vic is also gemmed with like three slot defense. All right, that was about two minutes and ten seconds. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Um, I think maybe the Miho team was was actually better, but like if I can put that Miho team on full siphon, it might actually work better, but it's also harder to gem up. Because I'm, I'm able to just use two attack and one HP gem, and basically this, this snowy, um, snowy worked. So yeah, that that's actually pretty much it. That's all I really want to <laughs> kind of show you guys in this video. Um, I thought it was really, really fun, and I'm really excited to be, like, finally be putting some monsters on siphon and using them to farm. So I actually got through the quest. I didn't do any rebirths today, but I went went for a lot of fusions. I actually fused a lot of things. So I actually finished the um, the dice event. So I'm just gonna roll my dice and roll roll my other thing and then we'll see we'll see what I get. Ooh nice 200 energy. This is actually one of the best uh, best things you can roll. Cause 200 energy is actually the equivalent of a lot of uh, a lot of gold and astral gems. All right, this is really good. I got three dragon sigils. Come on, roll three. Ooh, what? Oh man, man, today is crazy. Three, four, one hundred astral gems. Oh, oh wow. I I got like just the best rolls today, like the, all the best possible rolls. See what I get from this. Okay, 30 Astro Gems, I'll take it. It's not bad, not bad at all. Six star gem chest. Well, we'll see what's inside. Okay, 50k gold. It's kind of the... Yeah, 50k gold is... Uh... Actually, no, 50k gold isn't that much. Alright, got another 50k gold. Let's see if I can get like 100 Astro Gems. Okay, mid 10 mid star zones. Not so lucky on this one, but it's actually fine. We'll see what I get from the 6-star chest. You can see my uh, gold count all of a sudden just go up. Same thing with my Astro Gem count as well. The 200 energy is definitely really nice though. Okay, that was, uh, that was exactly what I wanted. Where is it? All right, there we go. Um, there's actually one last thing I I uh, I wanted to talk about, and that is that is the uh, like actually talking a little bit more about the tiger pack and what I'm planning to do with it. 
I, I know I talked a, a little bit in my last video about, you know, if the Tiger Pack is worth it, but I never actually said if I was going to go for the Tiger Pack um, or not. I think it's already out, right? It's in special packages. Basically, it costs 400. It gets you one wood tiger plus some gold and energy and then six star chest. So the six star chest usually gives you some really, really shitty gems. Um, it's not really, not really all that worth it. But the the gold is main, mainly used for you to um, basically get your tiger to like if you want an evil three the tiger it's going to cost a little bit of gold to actually feed it into the tiger. So the gold actually just you know is like um, it covers that that cost basically, and then the energy is kind of just like a little bit of bonus. Um, but I. I don't think I'm going to be going for this pack because, first of all, I already have the Dark Tiger. I don't really need another. Um, I don't really need another one, and I kind of do really want the Light Tiger. But the the thing is, the risk is so high that if I don't get a square slot, it's going to be a hundred percent useless. So, you know, and there are alternatives. It's not like there's no replacement for that monster. And the replacement isn't all too bad either. Like the Wood Yaksha can basically um, completely replace the Light Tiger. All you really need to do is get 10% more crit rate on your gems in order to make up for the base, you know, the difference in base crit rate by 10%. So she, like, she has slightly lower attack and 10% lower crit rate, and that's why she's a little bit inferior to the Light Tiger. Um, the Light Tiger also has attack leader, and she has crit crit damage leader. I think with a 100% crit rate, if you're, all your monsters have a 100% crit rate, the crit damage leader probably is better. So in the case where you have like all the ideal gems, she probably is still better for Dragon Speed 10. Um, but it's just so much easier to gem up a Light Tiger with like, basically, you can gem them up with Ruin, attack, crit rate, um, double attack. Pretty easy, because you know, all you really need to do is um, get more than 13% crit rate on your two gems. On your two gems, that isn't crit rate. And that's not too hard to pull off, depending on what gem slot that he, he has. Um, but I feel like it's way too risky to to risk that, because he's, he is definitely a monster that needs 100% crit rate, and it's kind of impossible. Well, not impossible, but kind of too hard to push 100% um, without a square slot. So if I do actually go for him and he doesn't have a square slot, then I'm pretty much screwed. The other thing is I, I don't have gold. Like, I, I literally do not have any any gold at, at all to to kind of do this. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about, like, you know, in the future, if they do have these events, if, you know, since last time they, they announced this event a few days before, but this time, like, everyone farmed Astro Gems like crazy, and they, they didn't really make much money. So this time they decided to... Um, to to basically have announce it and have it out and have it be um, have it have it end right away in two days, so uh, basically to give not give us enough time to farm up astrogems and not have everyone um, be able to get this monster unless you either you already have a lot of astrogems or you basically spend a little bit of money to make up in the difference in astrogems. Now I I think it's all right. Like it's uh it's it's okay you know, to for them to do this, because obviously, um, you know, they, they do need to make a little bit of money. But their, their other side is, like, if you're a player that wants to basically, you know, play for free, it, it doesn't, like, it doesn't really matter what they do. All you really got to think about is how can you, um, you know, basically, how can you be successful in this game uh, by like, you know, being prepared or predicting what they're going to do in the future. So, basically what I'm trying to say is, for newer players or players that are, that are um, you know, kind of starting the game, kind of going along, not like super, super new, but, you know, at least in the mid-game, it might be a really good idea for you to not do your 10 plus ones um, and then like save up in Astro Gems and kind of just rely on the event monsters and rebirth monsters. A lot of these event and rebirth monsters that they have out right now, or not even right now, but usually when they have out is like really, really strong. And they basically can take you through like um, pretty much all the game. Like you, if you can get multiples of these, you can just kind of stack them together and you don't really need to do a lot of summoning. Like if you're, if you're completely free to play, you really don't need to do a lot of summoning. Um, 
And originally I was kind of like this as well. Like I, I didn't use a lot of my four stars. You see, most of my monsters are actually event monsters. Some of them are actually pulls from like Dark Eggs, um, but a lot of them, a lot of these guys, like this is Rebirth, this is Rebirth, this is, was Rebirth, this was Rebirth, uh, you know, this was Rebirth, these were Rebirth. I have like three of these, two of these. Um, you know, uh, this was like for the Rebirth Festival, and this was for Rebirth. This is a event, event, Rebirth. Um, you know, so a lot of my monsters that I'm using are event and rebirth monsters. So you can actually make it through the game with, like, it's actually very, very possible for you to make it through the game with just some event and rebirth monsters. You don't have to rely on summoning four stars and, like, nat fours and nat fives and using them. You can actually get through the game with a lot of, like, using a lot of these monsters. Um, so I think it might be smarter for players that are, that don't spend a lot or are free to play to save up astrogems. Because these packages, like, it, it is possible that in the future, um, there might be a monster that's definitely worth it. Like, for example, if they release, like, the Dark Cupid or something. Probably not going to happen, but, you know, if they, if they actually do, then you want to be prepared for it. Like, if, you, if you're planning to not spend any sort of money, you need to make sure you're always at, like, 6,000 Astro Gems or something like that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to be skipping the next Heroes Festival. I probably am not too interested in in doing summonings anymore. Um, I'm really just going to save up my Astro Gems and kind of wait for these packages and maybe the next one will be something a little bit better. Uh, maybe it's going to be like Light John, Dark Cupid, Dark Moonflower. We can only hope, right? But I, I also think that they're, they're probably going to be releasing um, the monsters that they buffed in the last patch. Because if you take a look at the patch notes from before, they actually buffed the Light Succubus into an HP type. Um, right before they released the package. The same thing happened with the light and dark tigers. They buffed the, well, they actually didn't buff the light tiger, they buffed the dark tiger. So what I'm thinking is, um, since they buffed the, the wild fangs and the lokis, maybe the next package is going to be wild fangs or lokis. So I already have a, I already have a light loki, I also already have a light wild fang. Um, which I guess is, is alright, like she's, she's pretty good. Um, I don't think she's exceptional. I used to think that she's like super OP, super strong, but now I just think she's she's okay. Um, same thing with the Loki. Loki is really good for Titans. This this guy's got like a three turn attack down, defense down. If you can get him as a variant, he also has a he also has a um, defense lead, so that's actually pretty good. And the dark one, they is like double seal. It used to be stronger. It used to be an aggressor, but you know they kind of nerfed him. So maybe they're gonna like next pack is gonna be a light pack again so they're probably maybe going to be releasing the dark loki and then you know you can use the dark gleam fuse it with the dark loki and make the light loki or something like that in the next package and then maybe the one after that it's going to be like for the dark wild thing like they um and then you can fuse the light one into the dark one because i'm thinking it's going to be these two the reason is they're they're four stars without any nat three counterparts and if you see the pattern here well, actually, it's too too hard to tell from a pattern. If there, there's no pattern, if there's only two monsters. So this is all really just guessing. But it might be possible that they're going to be releasing the the Lokis and the Wild Things, since these two are also monsters that they buffed um, in previous patches. So I think I'm that's what I'm predicting is going to be happening in the future. Um, I think the smartest way to play the game isn't to aim for endgame. Because endgame's always changing. There is no real endgame in, in MSL. There's always going to be new things coming out. And the only thing you can kind of aim for is you look at what they've done before and you try to predict what they're going to do in the future. And then you prepare for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start saving up 6,000 astrogens and preparing for the next pack. Whatever they release, I want to be ready. Um, and that is pretty much it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.